Hello traders, it is Wednesday, November 6th and it's time for our weekly swing trading video. Boy, I wish I had some good news for you, but I really don't. Well, I take that back. The good news is that the market has been grinding, grinding, grinding higher and we've been selling bullish put spreads for the last month. So that's the good news. We've been making money the whole way up. We had a nice breakout through this double top formation right here. We had a test of that breakout last week twice after the FOMC statement and after the jobs report. So we had a drop and then a bounce and a close near the high, a drop and a bounce and a close near the high. That confirmed the breakout. So we knew we had support right there. We've got this nice little uptrend line that I've drawn as well. So as long as this stays intact, everything is good and we need to focus on the bullish side. Unfortunately, look at the volume. So these two bullish hammers, we get selling early in the day. And look, on that selling, we get nice big volume spikes and volume spikes on that reversal higher. That's a good sign. Asset managers who were hoping for a bearish reaction to the FOMC statement, all of a sudden knew that we weren't going to have the dip that they were looking to buy. So they had to step up, then they had to buy, and then we get this nice little pop higher. And then we get a nice little gap higher on Monday as well. And we've been gradually drifting and we finally closed in that gap today. You can see that on the long bar here. So that gap has been filled. We still have one more gap to fill right here. Look at the price action. It's minuscule. Asset managers are not worried that they're going to miss a year end rally. So they're very, very passive. There's a low level of conviction right now. The Fed is not going to lower rates again this year. They said as much last week. One and done. They like where they're at. Economic conditions are improving. Global political risks, that being a U.S.-China trade war and Brexit, that's improving. They don't see a reason to ease again. So the market's not going to have the Fed backstopping them for the rest of the year. We also have stock valuations trading near the upper end of their range at a forward PE of 17. So asset managers are not going to chase the market when it's fully valued. That's why we're getting a little bit of a drift lower and a drift lower. By the way, there is no trade agreement yet with China. They haven't even set a date for it. If Trump puts out a negative tweet of any kind, we're going to see one of these bars right here. And what that can do is it can strip away all of the gains that we've seen over the course of the last few weeks in a day. Because what happens is on these breakouts here, you have bullish speculators who start coming in, especially when you see a couple of bars like this. We bought into this. I'm good with it. We sold more bullish put spreads when we saw this. We're using this as our stop at the 302 level. No problem with any of that. But what happens when all the conditions that you entered the market on start to change, i.e. a U.S.-China trade agreement, if that changes at all, you're going to see bullish speculators get flushed out as this breakout fails. And it's been on light volume, so it won't take much. Whoosh! You see one big red candle. And the issue that we have with that is that, number one, our bullish put spreads, I'm going to have some of mine expiring this Friday, but the majority of mine are on for November 15th. That's excellent, especially since Monday is Veterans Day. Thank you, for all, uh, thank you to all of those of you who have served our country. Monday is a banking holiday, and so the action is going to be very, very quiet. You might as well remove that trading day because it's going to be a non-event. Very, very compressed trading range. There's not a lot of news coming out in the course of the next two weeks. We just finished the news cycle last week. And even with the news cycle last week, earnings, ISM manufacturing, ISM services, FOMC meeting, all sorts of news to drive the market. And here's what we get. Two decent little days of volume. That's it. You don't hear me say this often, but there are times when you should not trade. This is one of those times. We have to lay low. We have to wait for a pullback. 
That's all we can do at this juncture. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have trades on. We certainly do. We've got risk exposure. If you read my daily comments, we took a half position of SPY on this breakout right here. So right in here, actually. So we've got a long position there. We've got lots of bullish put spreads on right now that we're milking. Tick, tick, tick. We want to get through this week. Monday should be an easy day for us to get through. That puts no, four, no 15th expiration four days away. And our position should be very easy to manage. We should be taking profits. Option implied volatilities have continued to decline. That's good. Then we simply wait on the sidelines for that market dip that we need. Then we go back in and we reload. We don't know when that'll happen. We don't know what the news event's going, going to be. But this rally is vulnerable. Very, very light volume. So here's one thing that we can do to watch the market and to safeguard ourselves is I'm going to put up VXX, which measures option implied volatility. And you can see, let's zoom out here. This is what option premiums have done this year. Down at the lows of the year. So when you're selling credit spreads, which is what we like to do, see we've been selling them on this spike right here, which is nice. We want to sell when those premiums pop. And now they're so low that a whiff of bad news will send those stocks in the money because we have to go very close to the money to get a decent premium. So we don't want to take on that kind of risk right now. Got good positions on. I drew a downward sloping trend line right here. And I will know if the VIX pops. If it pops, that might be a sign that there's something going on. Whether it's news related or something's forming credit wise, there's a reason for us to take alert. As long as the VIX continues to drift lower, we don't have to worry about a market drop. So I'm going to be watching this to see if there's anything that spikes it up. I believe that with it being this low, there's a good chance that something somewhere will surprise the market. I don't know if it is the budget coming up. They're going to extend the budget into December. I mean, there could have been a government shutdown. I don't think either party wants that, so I don't see that as happening. The Brexit uh, elections and uh, the UK are going to be happening December 12. I really don't see that doing much of anything. So who knows? I think the most likely event is that Trump says, eh, you know, we're happy collecting billions of dollars in tax revenues from China. We're not that anxious to do a deal. China wants us to delay future tariffs. They want us to remove some of the tariffs that are on right now. And he may say, eh, you know, we're just not that interested in doing a deal right now. If nothing happens trade-wise with China between now and the November election, the market won't care. The market just doesn't want this whole trade issue to escalate. So, And it's pricing in that there will be some temporary type of truce between now and the end of the year. So I'm going to show you some bullish picks. I went through, I looked at them all, but I've also got a few bearish call spreads that you can look at. My mandate to all of you is... And when we look at our trades next week, this is the caveat. I would not place any new trades this week. Manage profits on your bullish put spreads when they expire or when you can buy them back for pennies. Do so. Reduce your risk. Let's wait in cash on the sideline. Let's wait for that pullback and then we can reload. So that is what we are doing. So when I show you all the picks next week, I'm going to tell you we didn't make or lose any money this week because you should not have been trading. But I know that you're expecting me to do some market analysis. I know that you're expecting me to do some stock analysis. So I'm going to do that. Before I get to the picks, for those of you who are watching this video on YouTube, you're probably seeing it about three days late. I released this real time to Option Stalker members. Everything that I'm showing you today is available at www dot one option dot com option stalkers are trading platform it has all of the searches the other thing for youtube watchers is that please subscribe to this youtube channel because every day i post my daily video an hour after the open it's got a ton of actionable trades in it 
So if you subscribe to the channel, you're going to be notified right away and you're going to know when that video goes up. So again, please give it a thumbs up if you like the content. Please post your comments. I will try my best to reply. So here's what we've got this week. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Before we get into this week, let's get into last week. Let's take a look at how our picks did. So I'm going to go into the October 30 bull list. Abbott. We wanted Abbott to be above that 100 day moving average and then we would be looking to sell bullish put spreads on Abbott. I still like Abbott. So this is one that you can put on your list and put an alert on it. Here's how we do that. Click GTC. I'm going to click on the top of that candle right there. This horizontal line will extend sideways. If it's breached, I'm going to know about it. So we did nothing with Abbott. CRM. We like selling this bullish put spread right here at the 200 day moving average. Video came out right about here, actually here on October 30th. So there's your first opportunity. That's a money maker right there. We've got a week has gone by. The stock is higher, farther out of the money. That is a winner. Facebook. We'll go back to Facebook. We had Facebook announced earnings. As I did the video last week, the stock was trading higher. We wanted to sell a bullish put spread using that 100 day moving average. Stock is still above it. We're above our stop level. We've got a week of time decay. That's a profitable position. HLF, there's October 30th. That's when the video came out. We were looking for a pullback. We got one to the halfway point of the green candle. That's what we were looking for. We got that the next day. Remember, that's our horizontal breakout right there. That's a winner. Got to watch out for that 200 day moving average. We're going to have to watch out for it because we're uh, short a bullish put spread. But if it gets through that 200 day moving average, it's got a chance to go higher. I don't think that hitting it is going to back it off right away. So we'll be in decent shape on this one. I like this horizontal support right here on that breakout better. I like the big volume in the long green bar as well. So still has good relative strength. Starbucks. Starbucks came out. There's October 30th. Did the video. Stock rallied on the open. We knew that this had a chance to be a good trade. And I had said, I like selling this bullish put spread off the 200 day moving average. So the next day, if you're a little bit patient on the open, you watch a stock pull back and pull back. I still like it. We're still above the 200 day moving average, but you had an opportunity if you're a little patient to get a better credit in here the next day or the day after that. But yeah, it still looks like it's in pretty good shape. Had a bullish hammer here. Got a nice green day today. I think it starts to grind higher. UIS had this nice breakout right here above the 200 day moving average. We saw it right here. I said, I like it here. I like selling that uh, bullish put spread at the 100 day moving average. If you waited till it went above the 200 day moving average, you've got a winning trade. If you just got long the stock, you've got a winning trade. I told you how much I liked this one last week. We had a beautiful cup and handle formation here. Cup, handle, breakout through horizontal resistance. Horizontal resistance happens to be the 100 day moving average, big volume. I really liked this one last week. It's been a very, very nice one for us. So, and the stock has this beautiful trending pattern to it. When I talk about nice orderly patterns, this is what I'm talking about, just like that. So let's take a look at our bearish picks. We wouldn't have done any of the bearish picks per se. They would have been bearish call spreads that we would have been looking at, but I did want to highlight some. We've got ALL downtrend line right here. That is still intact. So your stop would still be intact. It has continued to fade. That's a decent short. Grub. We like this big drop here, but we wanted to try and have it bounce a little bit to get near to that opening price. So this is where we just would have started looking at selling a bearish call spread. But given that the market's been pretty strong in the last week, we should not have been doing any bearish call spreads. McDonald's, same thing. October 30th, nice drop below the 200 day moving average. We wanted to sell a bearish call spread at the 200 day moving average. This actually would have worked out to be a great trade, even though we weren't doing them because the market was rallying. But look at that nice drop. So that would definitely have been a winner. 
Texas Instruments floundering around, long tails above body, love it. We would have been selling at the 100 day moving average. Uh, let's see, we got October 30th right here. So you get a little bit of a bounce to sell those. Yeah, I think you could try Texas Instruments right now if we get any kind of market pullback. I still like that as a bearish call spread. So I went through all the searches. I looked through the usual suspects uh, after earnings, heavy buying, relative strength 30, pop bull, strong after earnings. I went through all of them and I did the same thing for the bearish counterparts. Didn't really see a lot that interested me, quite honestly. It's hard for me to get psyched for the market right now when the volume is so low. Uh, we're seeing gaps higher right out of the gate and then flatlining through the rest of the day. When we do get a decent market move, it runs its course in about the first 30 to 45 minutes, and then we flatline the rest of the day. So really, really lackluster. But I'm going to put up custom search, and I'm going to show you just a very basic search that I used. And it yielded some decent candidates. So if you're doing this end of day, look for good option liquidity. That's pretty intuitive. We want stocks that have good options, option liquidity if we're selling out of the money bearish call spreads or selling out of the money bullish put spreads. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to be looking for relative strength. And I'm going to mark that on a one day basis four hour basis, two hour basis, and let's see what comes up. So these are our candidates right here. And I flip through these candidates and there's some good ones. AIG, BABA, CVS look good. IBM's getting interesting. And I'm just gonna click on the ones that I recall that look good. And then I'll go through the bearish list and then we'll go through my picks and we'll call it a day. So the first stock that I liked was AIG. And you can see how AIG, you've got this strong downtrend right here, earnings before the open, long green candle on the earnings, breaks this downward sloping trend line, stock has follow through buying, gets above the 100 day moving average on heavy volume. I like selling AIG at that 100 day moving average. And I think that puts us in the range of a 54.50, 54 bullish put spread. And I think it was trading for about a dime, but you're really, really close to the market. Like I said, I'm expecting the stock to grind higher, but any kind of whiff in the market is going to put this stock in the money. I don't particularly like that, but I do like the setup for AIG. Probably sets up well for nice day trading during the day. Buy pullbacks, buy pullbacks, buy pullbacks. Let's take a look at the chart here. So you get a rally up, rally up, draw your uptrend line. You get your downtrend here, draw your line that way. This is where you get on board. That might have been a little bit hard for you to follow, but I'll try and find a better stock. This one's choppy. There's nothing going on today. There is nothing going on today. So another stock that I like, Alibaba. Here it might be a little bit easier to uh, show you what I'm talking about. So you get your up, up trend line here. I want to buy Alibaba. I want to buy Alibaba. Okay, I want to buy a dip because the market's not doing anything. So on a day trading basis, you draw your upward trend line like this. And when it's breached, you go, oh, okay, it's starting to pull back. So then you take your alert line and you draw it like this. Drop it on that. And it would have intersected somewhere in here. And then all of a sudden you get an alert later in the day that says, hey, Alibaba, ooh, it's time to get in. Look at this nice little pop right here. In fact, I think I posted this in the chat room and said Alibaba just gave me a, a buy alert on a trend line. And there you go. Now you've joined that nice trend high. So here's Alibaba on a daily basis. You can see the nice breakout here. I don't like long tails up near resistance. That's where I want to see nice, long, green bodied candles with closes near the high. I'm not seeing that, which tells me that the stock is choppy. 
So it's not one of my favorites, but I do like this breakout here. I do like it on the volume. It's after earnings. So if you keyed off of that 182 level, I think you'd be in pretty good shape on BABA. Going to continue to go down. CVS, this is a really nice one. I day traded this one in the chat room. Made some money early today. Right in here. Stocks near the high. Good breakout. Gap through. So this is good. We can use that opening price right there is where you'd want to sell your bullish put spread. Use that as your stop and use that as your strike. So 69.50 would be the strike. Continue to go down the list. EA. EA just no movement. Lots of herky-jerky choppy action, but it is near these two major moving averages. So that was pretty attractive. GE had a nice move. Not crazy about it. It is breaking out through this horizontal resistance. Company's been plagued with a lot of credit issues. IBM, I had mentioned to you, I kind of liked because you've got this big gap down. You've got the stock rallying, got good relative strength in here, trying to get through the major moving averages. You got to wait and see what happens in here. So I would not put IBM on the list. In fact, it could just as easily come up and then start to roll over, which would make it a good candidate for a bearish call spread. We don't know right now. Interesting? Yes. Worth watching? Certainly. JNPR, Juniper, got a nice cup and handle, cup, handle, breakout through the neckline right here, breakout through the major moving average, really like JNPR. So that's definitely one that we want to put on the list. In fact, I think I'm going to have to add that to the list. I don't think I made it on the first round. Here we got MGM, nice breakout, good follow through, very choppy stock though. A great distance away from these major moving averages, so uh, not one of my favorites. And I think that's it for that list. The other bullish stocks I picked up somewhere else, so we'll go through all the bullish stocks here in a little bit. And we're just going to do this for the bearish counterpart, so we're looking for relative weakness daily, 4-hour, 2-hour. See how easy? Good option liquidity. So these would be our candidates right in here. That's an interesting symbol. I haven't seen Microsoft on that list. But I wouldn't be shorting Microsoft. We got this breakout through horizontal resistance right here. A nice compression here, probably gathering steam for a next move higher. I would not sell a bearish call spread on Microsoft here. It would have to break that breakout that support right here for me to want to do that. But I saw it, and so I thought I would bring it up. MTCH. Now here I would not short this stock yet because you can see how the stock has reversed the whole day from that early low. This could just as easily be a capitulation low. If we get another big green candle, things are changing dramatically then, and it goes from being bearish to bullish. So I wouldn't touch this. I prefer to see a gap down below the 200-day moving average and selling the entire day so that you get a long red candle with a close on the low. Now that, I feel good about selling a bearish call spread at the 200-day moving average. This pattern, not so much. We don't know. Is that a capitulation low? Maybe. Somebody's coming in and scooping that stock here. PYP, I'll look good. You can see this breakdown below the 200-day moving average right here. I don't think you're going to get enough credit at that 196.50 strike to make it worthwhile. So it's not going to make the list for that reason. So I went through and I took a look at the bearish stocks as well. And uh, I'm going to do one more search here to see what comes up. It may have been on a bearish sell signal. So we're going to go D1, H4, H2. See what comes up here. And GLW. That is trying to stay above this 100-day moving average. If it backs off, that might be a good bearish call spread to do. Stock not able to get through that resistance level. 
and I'm going to go right to my bearish picks. Not going to waste any more time this week, folks. Quite honestly, this is a go nowhere market. So we're going to click on lists. October 30 bear. We want to go into the November 6 bull list. So these would be some bullish put spread candidates. I like Adobe because we've got this downward sloping trend line that was breached to the upside after earnings. Excuse me, it wasn't after earnings. It just breached it, probably on market strength. You can see the bounce off the 200-day moving average here. It's been able to get through the 100-day moving average. We've got red candles here. We want to see a green candle in here. We want to see some relative strength. Once we get that, we can sell a bullish put spread off of that 100 day moving average. You always want to make sure that your short strike price for these bullish put spreads is below that major technical support. If that support is breached, you must buy the spread back in. I'm not into adjustments. Close her down. Our premise was wrong. We're going to look for the next trade. We're going to move on. So uh, still needs a little bit of time here, but I do like the two long tails under body. I think that support level is going to hold. I think Adobe could be a nice candidate and it's got room to run. So it is not making a new all-time high. So it's got room. AIG we looked at. BABA we looked at. FFIV I really like this but the option liquidity is very poor. You can see the announcement after the close takes off from the 100 day moving average, blows through the 200 day moving average, gets ahead of itself, major resistance up here, backs off, finds support right near that horizontal breakout. That's good. Boom, 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 boom. Marching higher. It's above the 200 day moving average right now. I think you could key off that 200 day moving average, but again, the option liquidity is very, very poor. So. I uh, would love to put it on the list, but for that reason, I think it's a very tough do. I may end up day trading this stock. MET, a little bit of a cup and handle, or you could call this a double bottom, higher low. You've got to break out through this horizontal resistance level and the 100-day moving average. This one, I think you can key off of that 47.50 level right there. And Tesla, I like this. In fact, I just showed this to the uh, chat room earlier today, and it was the 310, 30750 bullish put spread and being able to do that for 55 cents. And what I like about this is the long tails under body right here, which happens to be halfway up this long green candle right here. So we like that type of support. Obviously, we love the huge run up on earnings, and now the stock is showing relative strength. So looks really good. I like Tesla. So that's a nice bullish put spread that you could do. On the bearish call spread side, we've got ABBV. Super, super, super powerful stock right in here. Look at that big rally up. But it's starting to get toppy. We get this little doji up on top, followed by a big red candle, bearish engulfing pattern. And today, it was starting to sell off. It's been able to find support. You would want to watch it. And then if it starts to back off and it starts to show some relative weakness, get that orange line below zero, then you can sell bearish call spreads keying off of that $83 price level. DD. This is a little bit better candidate. We've got a downward sloping trend line right here. And visually, you can see that we're right on it. It happens to intersect with the 200-day moving average. We have an inverted hammer here. We've got another one forming here where you can see the stock is backing off. So I think selling at the 72.50 strike price would work well. Use that 200-day moving average as your stop. DD was that symbol. Coca-Cola, downward trend line here, actually channeling. We've got it below the 100-day moving average, relative weakness. I think you can sell a bearish call spread using that 100-day moving average. Oxy, you can see the announcement after the close. You can see the drop and the breakdown below the uh, horizontal support level right here. I also had XOM on the list. There was a build this week in 
oil inventories. I think XOM sets up a little bit better. We've got now a downward sloping trend line that we can use off of that high right there. And it kind of coincides with that. So if I went in and I took a GTC alert line and I clicked there and I clicked here, I think we're going to see it come in right there. So that's your downward sloping trend line. We can lean on that $73 price level. That's your short strike price. Stock is below the 100 day moving average now. Had an oil inventory build this week. So uh, energy stocks have popped a little bit recently. I think that you could see XOM drift lower. So I like that as a bearish call spread. WDC, we've got a little bit of chop in here, but after the earnings announcement, a drop right through that 100 day moving average. Stock tries to bounce, can't fill the gap, can't get above the 100 day moving average starting to drift lower. So I think here, instead of using the 100 day moving average, you can use that as your stop, but I would probably use this for your strike price at that 57.50 level above the opening of that candle. That's what I would really use for my stop on this one, because if it gets above this, it's probably gonna fill in that gap. PayPal I already showed you, and that's it for the list. So those are the bearish call spreads that you'd want to focus on. We'll take one more look at the market, and I'll give you one more recap. We've got some bullish put spreads on right now. They're in fantastic shape. We get through this Friday. Monday's a cakewalk because it's a banking holiday. That means that for the November 15th expiration date, you got four days where you have to manage the position. The market's gone nowhere. Option implied volatilities are coming in. You should be able to buy all those uh, bullish put spreads for pennies. I suggest doing so. Reduce risk. Get yourself on the sidelines. And then when we get the drop, who knows what will cause that drop. But when it comes, we'll be ready to reestablish some new spreads. Some of the trades that I showed you from last week are still setting up well for bullish call spreads, excuse me, bullish put spreads and bearish call spreads. So review those, review the picks I gave you this week. Just kind of keep an eye on them. If you see something that interests you or if we get one of those moves this week, then you can take action. But uh, my mandate is I'm staying sidelined right now. I just want to manage profits on the positions I have. And then I'm hoping, I'm hoping we get a really nice pullback because that's the only way that we're going to get volume back in the market right now is to get some selling pressure in. Asset managers are not overly aggressive here. They are not chasing. So the more likely scenario is just a very gradual drift, drift higher. But one bad news event, one news item, we don't know what it is, could cause a day like this, it'll strip everything away, it'll flush bullish speculators out, and that'll cause even more selling. We'll back off to at least that 302 level, maybe even a little bit more. That's the entry point that we're looking for. Have a great week, everybody. For those of you who watch the daily videos, I'll see you tomorrow morning, and I hope I have some good picks for you then. Thank you.